Yeah, I was in a horrible traffic jam uh, on 34th Street. I wanted to kill. I wanted to grab a cop and say, don't you understand? I have to get a strata Hadoop world. <laughs> anyway, I'm, I'm, happy to be, I'm uh, really happy to be here. I guess I can walk over here. Oh, 13 minutes and 46 seconds. I think I can do it. I think I can do it uh, uh, in that time. First of all, I, I want to say my, my data is not that big, but it's funny. It's cute. Uh, uh, I'm the cartoon editor of the, the New Yorker magazine. I've been doing cartoons there since 1977. I founded a cartoon bank in which you can license all the cartoons. Uh, and I also judge the caption contest. And I'm really happy this is in an ethics conference because is there a conflict of interest here? I mean, I'm selecting the cartoons, I'm buying the cartoons, I'm licensing them. But don't worry, I've, I've, uh, uh, I have uh, established a Blue Ribbon Committee, committee to, uh, to look at this, and, and uh, uh, I'm heading that committee. <laughs> okay, The New Yorker, since 1925, that's when it first came out. It's known for its cartoons. This is actually a 19th century character. We show him uh, once a year. Just to show you what some of the cartoons in The New Yorker are like. Okay, whoa, way too much information. That's a lawyer cartoon. My fees are quite high, and, and you seem like you have a little money. I think I'm seeing a conflict of interest here. Uh, Welcome to All About the Media, where members of the media discuss the role of the media in media coverage of the media. Mainly, we make fun of ourselves, as in this cartoon, last cartoon. I started my vegetarianisms for health reasons, then it became a moral choice, and now it's just to annoy people. That's the caption contest. All told, we have about 80,000 cartoons. The caption contest is our crowdsourcing of humor. Every week on the back page of The New Yorker, there are three images. One in which is this week's contest, and I've shown the answer to that. It says, a strike sends us home early. The images are these incongruous images. So in the one where the fish and there's a skeleton... Uh, the, uh, the actual winner was he only wanted me for my uh, body. <laughs> uh, all in all, it's sort of an interesting procedure, and it takes a little sort of uh, manipulation. From this, it's a five-week process from when the cartoon first appears in the magazine, when we count the votes, when you judge the vote, and then finally, uh, finally the, uh, uh, the contest occurs. Uh, so, so far we have had that many entries. We've had 445 uh, winners, and the weekly average is about 5,000, 5, but sometimes up to 10,000, which is really quite remarkable when you think about it because it's actually hard to do. <laughs> uh, so your chance of winning is that. <laughs> actually, since you're really wonky people, your real chance of winning is... This, if you keep entering the contest, that's the equation. By the year 2026, if you've entered 1,000 contests, just by chance alone, you'll have a 20% chance of winning. Now, if you do that and you've, you've, you're, you're, you've devoted one hour to the contest, okay, then you spent the Malcolm Gladwellian 10,000 hours, right? And you certainly should win the contest. You won't, but blame Malcolm. <laughs> Uh, some interesting data in the contest is, are men funnier than women? Well, I'll tell you one thing. They really try to be funnier more than women. Of the, uh, uh, in the entries, it's interesting, 84% of the entries are men and only 16% are women. But also very interesting is that uh, a greater percentage of women win. So one of the things this shows in terms of gender differences in humor, once you take away a lot of the extraneous things going on, uh, the things that guys can do, interrupt, talk loud, be gross, it, it sort of equalizes. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, so lots of people try to enter it. There was a, an article in the Wall Street Journal, How About Never is Never Good for You? Celebrities struggle to win the caption contest. That is... Uh, based on this cartoon of mine. It says, no Thursdays out, how about never is never good for you. It's probably my most reprinted cartoon. You can get it on T-shirts, ripped off, and actually you can also get it on a thong. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll be signing this book. 
later, this is my book, How About Never is Never Good for You, same, uh, by the same title. I'll be drawing a cartoon in it if you come to see me and get the book. And if that makes, if the cartoon, I'm thinking, if it makes it sort of a little bit more valuable, I'd like it back. <laughs> okay, actually, celebrities did struggle, and Roger Ebert entered 107 times, and he won on the 108th time. And he won with this contest. You see, it's sort of like a parking lot, but it's in the middle of the desert, and there's the F, uh, uh, F there. And, and the caption is, I'm not going to say the word I'm thinking of. <laughs> now, while it might seem that Roger Ebert entered a lot of times, people have actually entered, there's been 445 contests, and people have entered over 400 in, I think the record is 430. He hasn't won yet. Uh, I, I'm a member of the International Society of Humor Studies, <laughs> and E.B. White said, analyzing humor is like dissecting a frog. Nobody's but interested in the frog dies. <laughs> but I think humor is too important, actually, not to, be, uh, uh, not to sacrifice a few frogs. Anyway, I partnered with Peter McGraw and Phil Fernback, who are cognitive psychologists, and they looked at all the captions entered in the Roger Ebert contest, and they came up to these conclusions of how you win the contest. Length. Captions are fewer, use fewer more than, you know, than a lot of words. Punctuation, don't, don't do a lot of punctuation. Novelty, it's obviously better if you don't have a caption everybody else has. And abstractness and imaginability. That means when you look at that at, 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 the, at the caption that won there, I'm not going to say the word I'm thinking of, you can't actually retrofit the picture. Okay? Uh, now, all of that's well and good, but look at this caption contest. Objection, Your Honor, alleged killer whale. <laughs> well, the captions are not too long, that's true. Uh, punctuation, well, it does have exclamation points because you need it. In terms of novelty, well, here's the thing about novelty. Okay. That basic caption was submitted over 300 times. The, the sort of dirty little secret of humor is actually people like jokes that they, they almost could think of. <laughs> they make novelty within a, a, a cocoon of familiarity. So, uh, uh, you know, that's that. I gave a talk out at Google, uh, not wearing, uh, I was wearing a GoPro strap to my head now rather than uh, my Google Glass. And I said, there is no algorithm for humor. And, you know, maybe you guys can come up with uh, Part of the crowd, the, the crowd that goes that crowdsources the, uh, in the crowdsourcing is a New Yorker cartoonist. Each New Yorker cartoonist does 10 and 15 cartoons every week. When, uh, and we only publish 17 in the magazine. So that's where we get the images from. So the cartoonist's original caption, so this, this is the type of image you need with an incongruous. The cartoonist's original caption for this was... It wasn't me, mine set to vibrate. <laughs> now, what do you need for a caption contest? What do you need for humor in general? You need this, the technical term is by association. You need to bring together th ideas from two completely different frames of reference. That's what you're doing here, and that's what he did. He looked at them as phones. Uh, the Arthur Kessler, who wrote the book The Act of Creation, said both humor and science and art are the same, bringing together things that you didn't think were going to come together. Uh, in terms of this caption, if we look at the winning caption, shut up, Bob, everyone knows your parrot's a clip-on. Okay, that's mashing it up with the frame of reference of wearable Wearable parrots or wearable things. Second place is we have to find a better way to record our meetings. Okay, so that's parrots that repeat. Third place was, well, it's not my fault. Booty revenues are down for this quarter. So the three frames of reference that they dealt with, and overall there's 60 different frames of reference that people come up with. Although there are over 5,000 different captions, there are not, there are not 5,000 different categories. Just by sampling 500 of them, you get about 70% of all the categories. Okay, by association is good, tri association is too, one too many. While that picture of the rat on the guy's head might actually be funnier or more interesting, it would be very, very difficult for you to come up with a joke to bring together those three different terms of reference. Uh, uh, the, uh, so, in an attempt to algorithmize this, uh, I 
sent all the captions for a contest for this, this of the uh, alien following the car to uh, computer linguists at the University of Michigan. They compared all of the captions in it against uh, the, uh, the set of words on the internet to see what were the most significant. And then they were going to create semantic uh, uh, networks of them. Now, that's, that, uh, uh, that's the equation they came up with. I simplified it. <laughs> but actually, they did some sort of interesting work. Uh, these were sort of the nodes that... And from these nodes, you could... Uh, these semantic clusters, you could actually see the categories that were involved. Headlight, beams, alien, there were, immigration was there, UFO, tailgate, GPS, patrol, police officer. But what they were unable to do is a person still had to look at all these semantic clusters and tell you what they were. That being the case, I'm not ready to use that. Uh, what actually happens, I want it to go forward, is I have an assistant. This, is my, this was my assistant, actually, not right now, but my previous assistant, Mark Philippe Eskenazi. He's from the Harvard Lampoon. We call him Mark Philippe Eskenaz for short. <laughs> <laughs> he, he looks at all the captions. And uh, uh, this actually was the one he was looking at. It was right before the uh, uh, Obama election in 2012. And it shows sort of a politician in heaven. So that was the contest he was looking at. It's very tiring. <laughs> the only thing that can revive him is pictures of cute cats. Eventually, these, these were the ones the human being, Mark Philippe Eskenaz, <laughs> came up with. Politicians in heaven, politics as usual, puns, wordplay. And these are fairly arbitrary, but what I want to do when I submit the final captions for a vote is to sort of uh, potentially have three different constituencies. In other words, three different voting blocks. So what I do that, after I get these, I go to SurveyMonkey, uh, and I pick eight of these. I send them out to all the editors of the New Yorker magazine. So that's the crowdsourcing that goes on there. They send back their picks to me, and then I ignore it all and pick what I want. <laughs> <laughs> no, I actually do. What I find is that even though it's only maybe 40 or 50 editors, it usually mirrors fairly well what the people are going to vote on. So in this particular, uh, uh, in this particular contest, uh, this is what I got back from SurveyMonkey. And the one that won was, I hear he forged his death certificate. So it was, it, was, it was in relation to the Obama thing. Now, one of the interesting things about judging humor is judging humor automatically makes it less funny. Whenever it's judged, because they could, they could either rate these cartoons as uh, uh, unfunny, somewhat funny, uh, or funny. They almost never rate them funny, because you're in a judgmental mode. Uh, and I'll talk about that more at the uh, extended session. Uh, so this was actually the vote, and it pretty much split, it pretty much split evenly. But the, the, uh, I told you what the winner was. Uh, one thing to remember about a caption conscious anything is that sometimes the very simplest answer is the best. Uh, come on. It sort of makes you stop and think, doesn't it? <laughs> and I hope I have made you stop and think a little bit about humor and crowdsourcing. Thank you.